Hello, this week I want to talk a little bit about science fiction as a genre. As I said to you the other week, science fiction is a really contested and controversial genre. The first set of definitions we looked at didn't really convey that. They gave a sense that the genre was consistent, coherent, based on a common set of principles. While that would be nice, unfortunately, it isn't the case. As Andrew Milner says in Locating Science Fiction, sci-fi is a selective tradition, continuously reinvented in the present, through which the boundaries of the genre are continuously policed, challenged, and disrupted, and the cultural identity of the science fiction community continuously established, preserved, and transformed. It's thus essentially and necessarily a site of contestation. What Milne is basically saying there is that there's a fight around what science fiction is. There's a fight about how the genre should be defined, about what works get to fit into the genre, about where we draw the line between whether a work is science fiction or not. So, The Martian is a relatively uncontroversial case. I think very few people would argue that it isn't science fiction. It focuses on math, chemistry, engineering, botany. It's highly concerned with scientific accuracy and plausibility. And it even shows Mark doing the work, going through the equations, figuring out how the math and science works. So it's pretty squarely in the genre of science fiction. I'm not sure whether the same can be said by Ted Chiang's Division by Zero. When we first start reading the story, we seem to be in a very similar kind of book to The Martian. Um, Ted Chiang starts by talking about mathematical theory. He says, for instance, Dividing a number by zero doesn't produce an infinitely large number as an answer. The reason is that division is defined as the inverse of multiplication. If you divide by zero and then multiply by zero, you should regain the number you started with. However, multiplying infinity by zero produces only zero, not any number. There's nothing which can be multiplied by zero to produce a non-zero result. Therefore, the result of a division by zero is literally undefined. So we can represent Ted Chiang's ideas there in mathematical form if we wished. So for instance, we could say three times two equals six, six divided by two equals three. So if we multiply and then divide or divide and then multiply, we'll end up with the same number. They're inverses of each other. We can't do the same thing with zero. One, one times zero is zero, infinity times zero is zero. However, when we come then to dividing it by zero and getting back to what we started with, it just doesn't work. We have no way to get back to our original starting number, whether it's one, three, or infinity. So if we wanted to, we could rewrite the section so it was more like the Martian, so that it presented the actual mathematical equations. Ted Chiang, throughout the story, continues to provide mathematical theories and ideas. The most important of them for understanding what happens in the story is the one he talks about in the second section. He says, there's a well-known proof that demonstrates that one equals two. It begins with some definitions. Let A equal one, let B equal one. It ends with the conclusion that A equals two A. That is, one equals two. Hidden inconspicuously in the middle is a division by zero. And at that point, the proof has stepped off the brink, making all rules null and void. Permitting division by zero 
allows one to prove not only that one and two are equal, but that any two numbers at all, real or imaginary, rational or irrational, are equal. And again, we could express these ideas in mathematical form. This is one version of the proof. It starts by saying let a equals b equals 1, then a squared equals ab, because a times a would equal a times b. You then go on and take it through a number of transformations. For instance, you add a squared to both sides, and then you subtract minus 2ab from both sides. Eventually, you get to a point where 2a squared minus ab equals a squared minus ab. At this point, if you divide both sides by a squared minus ab, you end up with 2 equals 1. So if you're familiar with math or if you've been paying attention, I'm sure you've caught the problem here. The problem is that if a squared equals ab, then a squared minus ab equals 0. The final step then involves division by 0. So the proof is invalid. We can't divide by 0. We'd step off the brink. It just isn't possible. So on the surface of it, um, Ted Chiang's story seems to be in a very similar category to the Martian. It presents us with math, math that we could render in a very mathematical format. And in fact, Ted Chiang maybe even goes further than Andy Weir does. The structure of the whole story is reminiscent of a mathematical proof. Um, each of the sections is numbered, just as you would number the various steps in a mathematical proof. And we could see a parallel here with the Martian, where Weir seems to base a lot of his structure on either the engineering design process or the scientific method. However, when we get deeper into the story, we realize that things are getting a little more complicated. The short story is divided into three strands, each of which has a slightly different system of numbering. So as we've seen, one, two, and three discuss mathematical theory. 1a, 2a, and 3a talk about a mathematician, René, who discovers that division by zero is possible. And so that all numbers are equal to all other numbers. And this discovery devastates her. It destroys her mental health and stability. She ends up getting deeply depressed and even suicidal. She's based her whole life on a faith in mathematics. And then she's the one who discovers that it's all wrong, that it's just all been a game of numbers. And she simply cannot live with that discovery. Then we have our third strand, which is numbered 1b, 2b, 3b. And it deals with Renee's husband, Carl, who is supporting his wife through this mental breakdown. However, it shows Carl's growing awareness that he no longer loves Renee, that he's fallen out of love with her, that their relationship is no longer a central part of his life, and he's going to leave her one day. And eventually, the strands of the story come together at the end in 9a equals 9b, where Renee's revelation that division by zero is possible and Carl's revelation that he no longer loves Renee come together and are equated. Chiang shows them to be equally world-changing, faith-destroying events. So let's look a little more closely at that section. 9a equals 9b. The things that have been going on in my head, she, Renee, paused. It was like nothing I'd ever imagined. If it had been any normal kind of depression, I know you would have understood and we could have handled it. Carl nodded. 
But what happened? It was as, almost as if I were a theologian, proving that there was no God, not just fearing it, but knowing it for a fact. Does that sound absurd? No. It's a feeling I can't convey to you. It was something that I once believed deeply, implicitly, and it's not true, and I'm the one who demonstrated it. He opened his mouth to say that he knew exactly what she meant, that he had felt the same things as she, but he stopped himself, for this was an empathy that separated rather than united them, and he couldn't tell her that. So, I want to focus on the final line and talk about exactly what Chiang is saying there, because it is a little opaque. So the story ends with, this was an empathy that separated rather than united them, and he couldn't tell her that. What Chiang is implying there is that Carl understands Renee's loss of mathematics because he's lost his love for her. So they both have suffered a loss that's altered their worldview, that's destroyed their faith. And this should be common ground between them. This should promote empathy between them. This should bring them together. However, in this case, because Carl's loss is the loss of Rene, this common ground paradoxically separates them. So just to remind you of what a paradox is, it's a statement that seems to be self-contradictory, but nonetheless true. We see a bunch of them in 1984. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. It's something that on the surface doesn't seem to make sense, doesn't fit with our logic. But when we think about it further, we see some sort of deeper hidden truth within it. In this case, the paradox would be they're separated by their common ground. What should bring them together drives them apart. And I think what Chiang does in this story is very clever. The whole story is based on a paradox that one equals two, if division by zero is possible, that any number equals any other number. And yet it also ends on another paradox about human relationships, that sometimes what brings us together also tears us apart. And so we have these two parallels, these two paradoxes coming together, being equated. We're using the system of mathematics to reflect on and show the system of human relationships. So I hope you can see that division by zero is very different from the Martian. It may take mathematical theory at its starting point, but it's really not concerned with mathematical plausibility. In fact, the whole story revolves around something that's impossible in our mathematics. There are so many proofs to show that division by zero is possible, that it's highly, highly, highly unlikely it will ever be disproven. Just for your interest, I'll put up some examples from Common Academy on our Common site so you can check them out for yourself. So Chan doesn't seem to be interested in preserving scientific plausibility. Rather, he's interested in exploring humanity in a much more direct fashion, in using science and mathematics to get at what makes us human. His ultimate interest is in human psychology and human relationships. What, for instance, might cause the breakdown of our sanity? What, for instance, may cause our relationships to come apart? Who are we as people? What makes us? What breaks us? So we seem to be dealing with a very different kind of science fiction here. And as a way of resolving this problem, Many scholars, critics, writers tend to define two different categories of science fiction. On the one hand, we have science fiction like The Martian. It's science fiction that's based on the hard sciences. So sciences such as math, chemistry, physics, engineering, medicine. Hard science fiction tends to emphasize scientific accuracy and plausibility. 
it's interested in getting the science right. And for that reason, it has a much greater emphasis on exploring the potential implications of science and technology. The Martian would be a perfect example of hard science fiction. By way of contrast, we also have soft science fiction, which is based more on the soft sciences. So things like anthropology, sociology, psychology, linguistics, economics. What soft science fiction is interested in exploring is humans and their societies. It's interested in using science fiction as a way of holding a mirror up to our world and the people who live in it. If it has to sacrifice some scientific plausibility to do so, it's fine with doing that. And so you have a much greater emphasis on characters and their worlds. So this week we're going to continue exploring the second type of science fiction, the softer science fiction, as Ted Chiang tends to draw more on the soft sciences and focus more on characterization, on reflecting society, on making us think about who we are and the world we live in. So I hope you'll enjoy the explanation. I'll see you on the message boards. Take care. Bye.